Far to the west of the sizzling beaches, pulsing samba beats, and tiny bikinis for which Brazil is most justly famous lies a completely different slice of Brazilian life. Smack dab in the middle of the continent of South America lies the world's largest wetland, known as the Pantanal. Sprawling over parts of three countries, this thinly populated expanse of floodplain, river systems, and lakes rivals its more famous neighbor, the Amazon, for the richness of its biodiversity. A frontier land of cattle ranches and grasslands, the Pantanal has been declared a World Heritage Site and a Biosphere Reserve by the United Nations, and is South America's primary wildlife showcase. I'm Mark Huntley. I'm a journalist and documentary producer. I've traveled around the world for work and fun, and one of my favorite places for both is the amazing country of Brazil. In this series, join me on a trip around this fascinating South American giant that's full of contradictions and bigger in area than the continental United States. We'll encounter some of the diverse cultures and visit some of the majestic landscapes that make Brazil a magnet for world travelers. On this episode, we visit one of Brazil's most remote regions, the Pantanal, which also just happens to be the world's biggest wetland. Known as Brazil's Wild West, the Pantanal is about the size of Great Britain, boasts some of the planet's most astonishing flora and fauna, is the source of vital freshwater for much of South America, and sparks plenty of debate about the proper balance between development and the environment. We'll drive a hundred miles of dirt road right through the middle of this great floodplain, bunk down at a remote ecotourism lodge, meet some locals, or pantaneros, check out some fascinating critters, including the elusive jaguar, and watch a gold panner seeking that one big find. Along the way, we'll drive, ride, climb, and paddle into the heart of one of Brazil's least known areas, the Pantanal. We begin our journey into the Pantanal by driving to the old cattle and gold town of Pacone. Long known as the gateway to the Pantanal, Pacone used to host Brazil's biggest cattle auctions and was later a gold rush boomtown during the 1980s. Outside of town, we find the actual gate to the Pantanal, or at least to the northern end of the Transpantanera or Transpantanal Highway. This so-called highway is actually a single-lane gravel and dirt road that stretches 90 bumpy miles into the center of this remote tropical lowland. The Transpantanera was intended to be used to transport cattle from their grazing fields in the north to meat processing plants in the south, replacing massive cattle drives that went on here for centuries. As it happened, the engineers were overmatched by the task of building even a limited route across this massive flood basin that's underwater six months of the year, and they halted construction halfway across. It's a good thing they did, because completing the road would have disrupted the flow of waters that maintained this essential ecosystem. While they weren't thinking about bird watching, the foiled engineers ended up building one of the world's longest, most spectacular modern safari routes. Brazilians have a saying that goes, O Pantanal é vida, or the Pantanal is life. That it is. Migratory birds in the millions stop through here every year, and more than a hundred species of mammals and reptiles call the Pantanal home. We're visiting in May, the beginning of the dry season, so there's plenty to see. Most of this was underwater a few months ago. 
With comparatively little jungle or forest cover, the incidence of wildlife is so high that you'll see more animals in a day here than in a week in the Amazon. So much wildlife means frequent stops, such as for this crossing of baby caiman. This smaller cousin of the crocodile is one of the most prevalent predators of the Pantanal. We're also slowed by the Transpantaneros' creaky plank bridges. The engineering is basic, but in this remote region, that makes it easy for Pantaneros to fix the bridges themselves. After a long day on the road, we finally arrive at our base for exploring the Pantanal. Araras Eco Lodge was established in 1994 on a former cattle ranch. Every year, more ranches emulate Araras and become posadas, or lodges, many catering to the ecotourism market. The growth of ecotourism has been a financial boon to the Pantanal and provides what its supporters hope is a sustainable alternative to boom and bust industries like gold mining and to the factory farms that have taken over large swaths of the area and that threaten this fragile environment. Araras owner and founder Andre Taroni has spent 35 years working in ecotourism. Ecotourism for me is, uh, is the branch of the tourism industry that is using a natural environment without hurting it with the lowest impact possible and including as much as possible the local people, the community and their culture. That community has gotten by for centuries on cattle ranching, mining, and farming. Roberto Macedo, a Pantanero and an Araras guide, says he's personally benefited from the development of ecotourism in the Pantanal. Ah, eu tive muitas oportunidades porque antes eu trabalhava com garimpo, saí do garimpo de Poconé para trabalhar com turismo. E esse turismo já melhorou até minha visão de vida como o que é ecoturismo, o que é a natureza e também muitas coisas que vem, vem acontecendo na minha vida. Cultivating the local population instead of the local land is an integral part of the ecotourism mission. Naturalist and tour guide Doug Trent has also started a foundation to help keep the Pantanal in the hands of its best stewards. The main ecological threat to the Pantanal is the loss of the Pantaneros, the traditional people of the Pantanal. Through their cattle ranching, they have maintained the natural grasslands and have a history of protecting the species that are here. As they are leaving the Pantanal for other lives, either being forced out or deciding to leave, other people are coming in that are not maintaining the Pantanal in the way that it, it is currently. To cap off a great first day in the Pantanal, my hosts take me along for a sunset ride on the lodge's horses. It's a great way to tour the wetlands, and there's plenty more to see. Bird watching at Araras begins at breakfast. The Eco Lodge is a great place to observe the endangered hyacinth macaw, the world's largest parrot and sadly a victim of the illegal pet trade that has left only about 5,000 in the wild. We're taking the lodge's boats out for a short trip through the swampland. Safe in the boat, we can check out the locals. They get a good look at us, too.
At last, we reach semi-dry land and our destination, the Monkey Tower. Andre and his crew built this structure 80 feet up into the forest canopy to give visitors and monkeys a closer look at each other. Hey guys. So, fun? Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Howlers. Beautiful, this one's sleeping, look. Ah uh, yeah, the, it's that big male. Great stuff. Is that the wife in back or one of the kids? Looks like we caught these howler monkeys during nap time. Why are some black, why are some gold? Male, female? Yeah, the male, adult male is dark, black. The female is gold. And the young ones, they have the same color as the female until they mature. I think that by the age of three to four years, the, the young kids should get darker. All our monkey talk must have woken them because now they're up and about and hungry. It's already starting to get dark. This is about three years, the, the one is, you see there now. Right. And how old might the, the father be? Well, they live to be 13, 14 years old. Oh, there is a, a mother in the back of here. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me see. Want me to... Oops, she just went down from her branch. Hey, there is also a cappuccino monkey. Oh, a cappuccino. Oh. They go in larger groups. Beautiful. So they interact with the other uh, well, they, species? They, they share the area. Right. Can you call him? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here he comes. What's the nature of their interaction with humans? If you come too close to them, the older, the leader, will start to throw you branches right. if, he, if he feels that you are annoying. They are the monkeys who have the closest expression to our face, so they make a lot of expressions. Yeah. Very rich expressions. They look very individual. It's very, very different. You can really One, tell the individuals yeah. apart, yeah. huh? Yeah. Well, he's cute. Very good. It's good to keep a distance because they're kind of nasty. Really? Yeah, they, they look so cute. Yeah, they look cute that they are smart. Because so we better hold on to our binoculars. That's brutal. <laughs> As an unexpected surprise here in Monkey Town, we also get a rare glimpse of the elusive Jaguarundi, a smaller cousin of the jaguar. Jaguarundi are solitary daytime hunters, sometimes called otter cats because of their short legs and long tails. Protecting wild cats is a cornerstone of preservation work in the Pantanal, especially in the case of the jaguar. But protecting jaguars means changing the attitudes of Pantanero ranchers who traditionally hunt the big cats to protect their cattle herds. Rancho Lorino Falcon has killed about 40 jaguar over his lifetime and gives us a vivid demonstration of man versus jaguar combat techniques. But the jaguars don't have to worry about Lourinho anymore. He was one of the first in the area to sign up with a plan that pays ranchers to put their land under the protection of the privately held Jaguar Ecological Reserve. The ranchers keep their cattle and grazing lands, make money, and agree not to hunt endangered species like the jaguar. As an added bonus, the ranchers are enjoying the benefits of a growing ecotourism economy.
Antes ele não pensava em fazer e falava que eu tava, iam tomar minhas terras. Ah, agora eles estão mudando de ideia, né? eles estão todos querendo fazer a reserva. Né? Inclusive o um irmão meu já está fazendo a reserva dele. Next, we're going to leave the spears and guns behind, grab our cameras, and set off on a new kind of jaguar hunt. Get down, get down. I got him, I got him, I got him. Jaguar. I take some time to explore the lodge's hammock and get a catnap in before what's going to be a long night. Then Andre arrives to fill me in on our plan for finding Jaguar. With nightfall, we set out on our own Jaguar hunt, 21st century style, with video cameras instead of guns and spears. As our eyes adjust to the darkness, Doug sweeps the roadside with a spotlight to try to pick up eye shine, the distinctive reflection made by the eyes of nocturnal animals. Jaguars are not known to hunt or attack humans, so there's little for us to worry about. This rabbit, on the other hand, should watch its step. Luckily, we spot a washed out bridge before we cross it, and thanks to the simple Pentanero engineering, are able to make a quick repair. We got some here, kids. We got some. Unfortunately, that something is just a band of capybaras we've startled with our lights. The chunky capybara is the world's largest rodent and a favorite snack of the jaguar. In a flash, all our searching pays off. Volta, volta, volta. Para, 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 para. Where, 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 where? Get down, get down. I got him, I got him, I got him. I got him. Jaguar, a pair of jaguar. Three jaguars. We're incredibly lucky to spot a jaguar in the wild at all, let alone this, a mother and two cubs. Jaguars are the most elusive and least studied of the big cats, and researchers can spend months in the wild tracking these secretive animals without actually seeing them, which means we've hit the jackpot on our first try. These amazing creatures can grow to be 300 pounds and measure six feet from tail to snout. And despite its name conjuring up notions of speed, the jaguar is actually the slowest of the big cats. Their real advantage lies in their stealth and strength, specifically their powerful jaws that can bite through the bones and skulls of prey. Their unique style of attack is to jump onto their victims from behind and deliver a fatal chomp directly to the brain. Jaguar numbers in the Pantanal have rebounded over the last 20 years as the trade in their skins has fallen off thanks to regulation and fashion. Worldwide, their numbers continue to decline. We've been incredibly lucky. Our safari by night has been an unqualified success. Back on the road in the light of day, we come across a pantanero knee-deep in a local tradition. Prospecting. This was gold country before the cattle ranchers arrived. The Pantanal's biggest deposits are thought to be cashed out after 400 years of mining. But gold fever still lives on in panners like Dionisio, who sift through the remains of abandoned mines looking for riches. Come on. Come on, it's to maintain it. Manter o custo. Aí eu trabalhava de pedreiro, né? Uhum. Mas aí, me chamo pra cá, fracassou aqui a cidade né, de serviço, então tem que procurar outros meios. Shovel loads of earth are washed to separate the heavier gold bearing silt from the mud. After looking for any shiny nuggets among the pebbles, Dionisio swirls the sand and mud to let the gold dust settle to the bottom of the pan. 
The whole process reduces a bucket full of mud to a pinch of sand that may or may not contain any gold at all. It's a lot of work for a tiny yield. Unless another big gold strike is made, prospecting in the Pantanal is a job for small operators like Dionisio and large mining operations with the machinery to process huge amounts of earth for the traces of gold they may contain. Brazil has restricted the use of several toxic chemicals, including mercury, used to extract gold from the soil in order to protect the fragile environment of this enormous and vital wetland. The Pantanal has become a proving ground for efforts to strike a balance between economic development, cultural sustainability, and ecosystem conservation. From what I've seen on this trip, ecotourism appears to be a promising way to sustain the traditions and biodiversity that make the Pantanal so unique. Not just by bringing tourists and their money into the region, but also by preserving the time-honored way of life that has kept the Pantanal a paradise. The major success that we have attained so far, in my eyes, is to make the locals understand that this amazing nature that they were born in has a very important role for the planet and that they can also earn their living out of this.